20th century girl tells the tragic, but beautiful love story about a 17-year-old's first love. The movie begins with a scene of a man cleaning the snow in front of his store. He is not Bo Ra's father, and the mailman comes and delivers some mail to him from Bo Ra. He opens the mail and sees some pictures and a CD of a movie inside. On the other side of the world, we see Bo Ra filming a commercial. She gets a phone call from her father, and he asks her whether she's seeing anyone. After a loud phone call, she hangs up and sees her father had sent the CD that he received. A Forbidden Love in Everyone's Dreams is a movie that has a sentimental meaning for Bo Ra. She immediately gets a flashback to an amazing period of life, and we are taken back to 1999. A 17-year-old Bo Ra gets into her best friend's room and sees that she isn't ready. She goes to her and asks whether she'll be going to New York for heart surgery, but her friend says that her heart was stolen by someone. She tells her the story of when a guy had come to her mother's clothing store, but her mother wasn't there. She had offered the guy to take his measurements herself, but tripped while she was going to him. She had accidentally poked her finger with one of the needles and was bleeding. The guy had come to help her, and that's when she saw his badge. His name was Bik Hyun Jin. Her friend, Kim Yeon Do, tells her that she feels her heart flutter every time she thinks of him. Bo Ra pokes fun at her and asks whether that feeling is because of her heart disease. She names all of the people Yeon Do had a crush on, but Yeon Do tells her that she feels different about that guy. She says that she can't sleep at night, and listening to songs makes her cry. Yeon Do tells Bo Ra that the uniform the guy had worn was from the same high school they go to, which makes her not want to leave, even more. Bo Ra thinks for a while but comes up with an idea to make her friend an email. Yeondu arrives in New York and writes her friend a mail. Apart from the usual stuff, she gives Bo Ra instructions to follow Hai and Jin. The day comes and we can see Bo Ra ready, she wakes up early and heads to the neighbor's bus station so she can ride the bus with the boy inside. She almost misses it, but the driver stops and picks her up. When she gets inside, she slips and falls into a lap of a boy. She gets up but ends up falling again. The boy gets up from his seat and lets her sit there. She looks at him and by his badge, sees that it's Hai and Jin. They arrive at school, and Bo Ra proceeds to follow the boy to his class. Her hopes are let down, though as a professor stops her, because boys and girls are divided in the school. She's bummed out for not being able to see him, but her co-student tells her not to worry, because the boys and the girls will get together at lunch. Lunchtime comes, and all the students join together. Bo Ra sees Hai and Jin, and makes sure to follow his every move. He finishes his drink and tosses it in the garbage can before heading out with his friends. Bo Ra remembers that Yeon Du's fate is in her hands, and proceeds to act. She goes to where Hai and Jin had stood, and measures how tall he is, as well as what kind of soda he had drunk. She writes down that that the boy is 181 centimeters tall, he likes orange soda, and his shoe size is 9. He plays basketball and is popular among his peers, he has no girlfriend, and is closest to Poong Woon Ho. They are neighbors and walk to school together every day. Yeondu writes back to He and asks her to get closer to Hyun Jin, and Bo Ra considers joining a club he's in. The next day, at class, Bo Ra sees that Hyun Jin is playing football through the classroom window. He ends up falling and spraining his leg, and when he does so, Bo Ra screams in shock. Her professor turns around and asks her what's wrong. She pretends that her stomach hurts so she can go to the nurse. When she gets to the nurse, she sees Hyun Jin and Woon Ho sitting on one of the beds. The nurse asks her what's wrong and she pretends that her stomach hurts. He gives her a pill and tells her to rest. She goes to the bed that is next to the boys and proceeds to listen to their conversation. She finds out that the boys will be auditioning for the broadcasting club. The audition comes and so does Bo Ra's turn. She gets on stage and performs Taekwondo. The crowd is amazed, as well as Hyun Jin, so much so that he withdraws from the audition, so he can leave space for the talented ones, like Bo Ra. Bo Ra ends up getting into the club, but Hyun Jin doesn't. She assures her friends not to worry, as she has Woon Ho in her club. After the bell rings, Bo Ra tries to introduce herself to Woon Ho, but he brushes her off. She sees Hyun Jin at a payphone, and runs to catch the number he's dialing in time. She's able to catch a few digits, before Woon Ho stands next to him, blocking her vision. Bo Ra goes to a payphone close to her house later on in the night and looks for Hai and Jin's number. After a couple of failed calls, she finally calls the right number. She tells him that she will be doing a survey, and he needs to tell her what his favorite song is at the moment. He tells her the song title, and she tells him that he could get a gift in the mail if he tells her his pager number. After a moment of silence, Bo Ra hears her name being said, so she ends the call in fear. The next morning, Bo Ra is sitting in the club's meeting room when Woon Ho walks in. He asks her whether it was her that called Hyun Jin the night before, and she says no, but outs herself doing as such. He asks her whether she wants his pager number, and even though she tries to act like she doesn't know anything, she cracks. She realizes that it was Woon Ho that answered the phone, and not Hyun Jin. The truth is out, so Bo Ra tries to get the best of it. She asks Woon Ho whether he could give her his number, and he says he will do it only if she brings him a specific movie from their rental shop, and that movie is a forbidden love in everyone's dreams. Bo Ra does as she's told, but gets in trouble the next day at school, because her teacher finds the inappropriate movie in her backpack. 
As punishment, students are forced to hold the items they got in trouble for in the middle of the hall, so everyone can see. Woon Ho comes to her and sees that she has his movie, so he takes it and casually walks down the hall. This infuriates Bo Ra, and she promises to make him learn his lesson. Later on in the night, Hyun and Jin and Woon Ho walk into the rental shop, while Bo Ra is working at the counter. Woon Ho asks for membership for Hyun and Jin, and Bo Ra gets the hang of it. She hands him a piece of paper to put his name and date of birth on it, but Woon Ho tells him that he can get a free movie if he puts his pager number in. He writes down his pager number. Yeondu rings him a couple of days later, and when it goes to voicemail, she plays his favorite song. Woon Ho and Bo Ra do a segment for their club outside, where everyone is. She scans the people, and sees Hyun Jin surrounded by girls. She asks Woon Ho about Hyun Jin's type of girl, and he tells her. She asks about his plans for the future, and he tells her that he wants to pursue movies. She asks him if it's because Hyun Jin is handsome. But he answers that he likes cameras. Bo Ra stops for a second, as she realizes that Woon Ho is talking about himself. He laughs, and tells her that she should focus more on their work. He tells her to look through the camera, and film some interesting things. He shows her how to use the camera, and she does a great job. Bo Ra and her friends go to the arcade after school. After a while, their fun is interrupted as a guy bursts in, and tells them that there is a fight between the Paradise Gang and some other boys. Everyone gets there, and sees a guy from the Paradise Gang trying to start a fight with Hai and Jin. He tells him that he shouldn't have messed with his girl, but she chimes in and says that she was the one he rejected, and not the other way around. Hai and Jin tells the girl that she should find a better man, and walks off. The man doesn't take that well. He grabs a beer bottle, and tries to smash it in Hai and Jin's head. He is stopped, however, as Bo Ra kicks the bottle out of his hand. The man is stunned, but tells his people to go after Bo Ra. Woon Ho stops them as he sprays the beer in his eyes. He grabs Bo Ra by her hand, she grabs Hai and Jin, and they run. They manage to escape, as they sit down on a bench, next to a police car. Paradise Gang stops, and they run away, not wanting to get in trouble. Woon Ho looks at Bo Ra's leg, and asks her whether she's okay. Bo Ra ends up getting cast on her leg in the hospital, and her father comes to get her. He tells her not to tell her mother she got into a street fight, because she'll worry. Bo Ra smiles, and tells her dad she wishes every man was like him. The next morning comes, and Bo Ra can be seen waiting for someone in front of the school. Her friends come and try to drag her to a new cafe. A sound of a motorcycle stops them, and when they turn around, they see Hai and Jin on it. He comes to Bo Ra, and asks her to get on it, as he has a surprise for her. They arrive on a bridge. Hai and Jin admits that it is his fault she got hurt, but asks her why she helped him. She thinks of Yeondu immediately, but decides not to tell him about her. She tells him that she worried that he was going to be beaten to death, so that's why she helped. He smiles and asks her whether they're going out, and she gets stunned for a minute, but tells him not to speak nonsense, and bring her back to class. Hai and Jin smiles and tells her that he will bring her back. He goes to turn on the engine, but it doesn't want to start. He tells Bo Ra that he will fix it, but they end up being stuck there until the night. A truck picks them up, and as they're sitting, Hai and Jin hears Bo Ra's stomach growl. He asks her whether she wants to get some food, and she agrees. Bo Ra sees that Woon Ho is working there, and gets shy. They order noodles, and Bo Ra can't seem to stop herself from eating. She chokes on her food, when Hai and Jin calls her great, and asks her to date him. She tells him that he can't think that, and tries to make him disgusted with her. She tells him that she shoves pizzas in her mouth, and proceeds to shove all of the noodles in her mouth. He tells her that he doesn't mind, and her father owns a pizza place across the street. She doesn't give up, and tells him that she rarely takes showers, isn't good at math, and her personality is horrible. The last thing she tells him, is that she lets out so much gas, she could sing him a song with it. She realizes that she had gone too far, so she exits the restaurant quickly, forgetting her clutch. She gets to the bench, when she realizes her bandage is coming off. She sits down, and a man throws a toy that explodes with fog. Fog is everywhere, and nothing can be seen. Bo Ra sees a clutch in front of her face, once the smoke clears out. She looks further, and sees that Woon Ho is standing in front of her. He helps her with the bandage, and gets her leg wrapped. He tells her that he had thought she liked Hai and Jin, but she tells him that she's only interested. He tells her that it's the same thing, but she tells him that it isn't. He asks her what liking someone means, and that makes her silent. He tells her to use her fists next time she fights, before walking off. Bo Ra gets home, and sits down to write an email to Yeondu. She wants to tell her that Hai and Jin likes her, but she tells herself that she'll take care of it. Bo Ra's school takes the students on a trip, and all of them are having fun. Bo Ra goes to a stand, where drink supporting sufferers of different diseases are sold, one of them being heart disease. She buys it, but she's short on cash. By the time she asks her friends whether they can lend her money, Hai and Jin hands the man some. She asks him why he's done that, and he tells her that he wants her to sing a song to him, once they start dating. She gets embarrassed, and drags Hai and Jin to the side to talk to him. She tells him that they are nothing more than classmates, and he should never think that they would ever date. The night comes, and the teacher checks on the girls. Once he goes away, the girls get up and take the alcohol they've been hiding on the balcony. They try drinking it, but it's too strong for them to get it down, so they take Bo Ra's drink and mix it. 
After a while, all of the girls are drunk. They see a bottle floating on their balcony and realize that the boys are stealing their liquor. Bo Ra gets pissed and decides to take the matter into her hands. She goes to the boys' door and knocks on it. Woon Ho opens and she demands their bottle back. The professor hears them and heads to check the halls. Woon Ho grabs Bo Ra and they hide in one of the storage rooms. Bo Ra looks at Woon Ho and admires his features while complimenting him. The morning is rough for Bo Ra as she wakes up with a hangover. The students have been exposed for drinking alcohol, so their punishment is to clean the beach. Woon Ho comes to Bo Ra and hands her a drink to refresh herself. She smiles, takes it, and heads to sit down at a rock. Hai and Jin, who notice the way she looks at Woon Ho, suggest they all take a picture together. They take the picture and after they get back Bo Ra, prints it and sends it to Yondu. She tells her that she can't wait for her to come back, so she could tell her the great news. Bo Ra is at the shop one slow and rainy day, when Woon Ho appears at the window. He tells her that he starts work in the shop across from her. The next day. The next day comes, and Bo Ra sees him working there. When everything closes, Bo Ra stays outside to play with her little brother. Woon Ho approaches them and says hello. Bo Ra's mother comes onto the balcony and asks for them to get inside. Bo Ra sees her father and motions for them to go back inside, because Woon Ho had just arrived. Her father gets the hint and drags her mother inside. They sit down and have some ice cream. After some time, Bo Ra tells her brother to go inside. He goes, and Woon Ho tells her not to be so harsh on him. She tells him that he doesn't have a younger sibling, so he doesn't know what it's like. Woon Ho says that he has a little brother that is five years old. He asks her whether she likes fruit, she says yes, so he takes her to see a plum tree. He tells her that he used to stay there, before moving to New Zealand. His brother is with his mother there, and he stays with his father. Bo Ra gets excited when she sees the tree, and runs to it. They end up filling a basket and sitting down. Bo Ra calls Woon Ho lucky, as he knows what he wants in life. He jokes with her, and says she's good at mimicking, as he reminds her of the call she had made to Hyun Jin. She gets mad, but he calls her beautiful. They get lost in each other's eyes, and Woon Ho leans for a kiss. Their moment is interrupted as a plum falls on Bo Ra's head. They laugh about it, and Woon Ho asks whether she's okay. He walks Bo Ra back to her house, and hands her the basket of fruits. Bo Ra asks him whether he wants to go to the cinema with her on the weekend. He says nothing, so she decides to go inside. Before she has the chance to leave, he spins her around, and kisses her on the lips. She is shocked, but he tells her that they will be going on the weekend. Before he leaves, Bo Ra writes to Yondu as soon as she gets home. She tells her that being in love is amazing, and nothing like she had told her. She assumes that if what she's feeling is love, then she sure is in love. Couples of days go by, and Bo Ra can be seen as happier than ever. The only problem she has is that she can't find the proper clothes to wear on her date, so she goes and buys some. She is met by Hyun Jin, who wants to know everything. He invites her to grab an ice cream, so they go where Woon Ho works at. They eat some ice cream, and when Bo Ra gets some of it on the side of her mouth, Hyun Jin goes to wipe it off, but Woon Ho beats him as he hands her a napkin. He sits next to Hyun Jin, and both of them try to get her attention. She focuses her view elsewhere, and sees her best friend looking at her through the window. She hurries to her, and Yeondu gets into the shop. Both of them cry while hugging each other. They go to Yeondu's place to get to talk to each other. Yeondu says that she feels like she's reborn, but admits to being so excited to see Hyun Jin. She says that he looks good, even with the ice cream uniform on. Bo Ra tells her that's Woon Ho, but Yeondu tells her that she's in love with that guy. Yeondu takes out the picture she received from Bo Ra, and Woon Ho is put in a heart. We get to see a flashback to when Yeondu first saw Woon Ho, and he was the guy from the shop. Bo Ra realizes that she had fallen in love with the boy her best friend is in love with. She is heartbroken, but doesn't Yeondu anything about it, only the part where she had mixed their names. Yeondu laughs, as she thinks the situation is funny. Bo Ra decides to tell her the truth, but backs out of it, once she sees the scar across Yeondu's chest. The day of the movie date comes, and Yeondu meets Woon Ho, only to tell him that Bo Ra has to help at Madam's farm. Bo Ra can be seen working with Hyun Jin. He annoys her so much so, that she ends up showing grapes in his mouth, just to shut him up. Yeondu teases Bo Ra for liking Hyun Jin, but she doesn't know the truth. Bo Ra tells her that she doesn't like him, and never will. Yeondu talks about her date with Woon Ho, and how amazing he is, and that saddens Bo Ra. She receives a message on her pager, and sees that she has a missed call from an unknown number. She calls the number, and hears Woon Ho asking her to call him. She hangs up the phone fast, so Yeondu wouldn't hear. She ends up sneaking out of her house to call Woon Ho from the payphone. He answers, and asks her to count to ten. By the time she's finished, he is standing in front of the payphone. They sit down, and he hands her a phone, so she can call him from it. She can't stand seeing Woon Ho think that they will be together, so she lies to him to keep him away. She tells him that she doesn't have feelings for him, and apologizes if she let him on, before leaving. Woon Ho ends up walking the empty streets, while rain is pouring on him, with a letter in his hand. In the letter, he reveals that the first time he saw her, was when he walked into their shop. She couldn't reach the top of the shelf, so he helped her. The flashback shows the time when Woon Ho had come back to the city. It shows that he had borrowed one of Hyun Jin's uniforms, and that's why Yeondu had mistaken his name. 
He tells her that the second time he had seen her was when she was running to catch the bus. He had also seen her hiding underneath the bed at the nurse's office. He tells her that he had noticed the unpredictable things she would do and that had drawn him to her. He had thought she was interested in Hyun Jin, as she would ask about him all the time. He was surprised to see a different side of Bo Ra, that one drunken night on a school trip. Not only had she complimented him, but she also admitted that she liked him that night. Woon Ho admits to being confused and scared to ask whether she likes him or Hyun Jin. He tells her that he is confident that she likes him, and that is why he is writing the letter to her. He has to go back to New Zealand unfortunately, but he promises her that he will be back. The last thing he says in the letter is, I like you Bo Ra. Devastated Woon Ho drops the letter on the ground, as it doesn't have any meaning to him anymore. The next morning comes, and Bo Ra sees Woon Ho at school. She walks past him, but they are in the same club together, so she's forced to work with him as his partner on a project. After a long day of awkwardness in the work environment, they are finally finished. Yeondu gets to Woon Ho, and asks him whether they have finished. He tells her that they have to edit the footage, but it will be hard, since the editing machine is old at school. Yeondu suggests they go to SBS, because she knows someone who can help them there. They agree on going and meeting each other on the bus. They finish their work there, and Yeondu and Bo Ra go to grab a drink to freshen up. Yeondu tells Bo Ra that she will ask Woon Ho out, and asks Bo Ra to help her get more alone time with him. Bo Ra is heartbroken, but she doesn't want to hurt her friend, so she agrees to help her. They go to a fair, and Bo Ra takes every chance to leave them alone, and goes with Hyun Jin. She tries putting them together for a picture, and letting them be alone, but neither of them is happy. Woon Ho can't stop thinking about Bo Ra, and Yeondu notices him looking at her. They get on a roller coaster, and Yeondu tells Bo Ra that she shouldn't be avoiding rides because of her. If she wants to go on a more adventurous ride, she should go. Yeondu says that she will stay behind and watch them. Bo Ra doesn't want to go at first, but notices Yeondu motioning for her to go, so she has alone time with Woon Ho. So she ends up dragging Hai and Jin to the roller coaster. Yeondu and Woon Ho sit down, and she tries to make some casual conversation with him, but he cuts her off and says that he wants to go on the roller coaster as well. He gets to Hai and Jin and Bo Ra on time, and he sits next to her instead of Hai and Jin. Hai and Jin goes back to Yeondu and tells her that he doesn't feel good about Woon Ho being on the roller coaster. She asks why, and he tells her that Woon Ho is afraid of heights. Yeondu asks why he got on the roller coaster, and Hai and Jin tells her that it's because Woon Ho likes Bo Ra, and she likes him as well. Yeondu is heartbroken, as she thinks of the worst. Woon Ho starts sweating and breathing heavily. Bo Ra asks him if he's alright, and he admits to her that he is afraid of heights. She asks him why he got on it, and he tells her it's because of her. The ride starts, and Woon Ho holds Bo Ra's hand tightly, as she's the only thing calming him. After the ride, Woon Ho and Bo Ra sit together. She suggests getting some water to calm him down, but he wastes no time, and tells her that he will be leaving soon. She tells him that it's great, and he asks her whether she believes that. She tells him that he will be seeing his brother, whom he missed a lot. Woon Ho smiles and admits that he thought she would be sad about him leaving, but she looks okay. He thanks her for everything, before leaving. On the way back home, Yeondu asks Bo Ra whether she has something to tell her, and Bo Ra says she doesn't. Yeondu asks her whether she has feelings for Woon Ho, and Bo Ra tells her that it all happened before she had come back, and that she doesn't have feelings for him anymore. She was afraid of telling her, because she didn't know how she would react, because of the surgery. Yeondu can't believe that her best friend has manipulated her, and made a fool of her. Bo Ra tells her that she didn't want a guy to get in between their friendship. Yeondu tells her that she is the most important thing in her life, and if she had to give up Woon Ho for her, she would. Tears fall down Yeondu's eyes, as she leaves her best friend in the middle of the street, Bo Ra tries to call Yeondu, but her mother answers, because Yeondu doesn't want to talk to her. Yeondu opens the email she shares with Bo Ra, and finds a mail in the trash. She opens it, and reads that Bo Ra had sent her the mail, where she tells her how in love she is with Woon Ho. Yeondu starts crying, as she feels horrible for blocking Bo Ra from true love. She talks to Woon Ho the next morning, and tells him that Bo Ra likes him. She also admits to liking him in the past, but assures him that Bo Ra is the one for him. She calls her the best friend ever, as she always looks out for the other before herself. Tears fill Yeondu's eyes, as she mentions all the times her best friend has sacrificed herself for her. Woon Ho sits at home, late in the night, thinking about what to do. He looks at the CD that Bo Ra had given him, and that's when he decides he will fight for her. He rushes and goes to her house, but he doesn't know about the disaster that had happened before he got there. Before him coming, Bo Ra had come home to a horrible scene. Her brother is taken away by an ambulance, and they all rush to the hospital. Woon Ho gets to the payphone and leaves a message to Bo Ra, saying that he will be waiting for her at her house because he has to give her something before he leaves the next day. Bo Ra and her family receive good news about her brother, but Bo Ra doesn't want to go home, even though her father suggests she does. Woon Ho ends up waiting all night for her and doesn't lose hope until the morning. The next morning, Bo Ra goes to school and sees Yeondu. She wants to talk to her, but she knows that Yeondu doesn't want to. They get into the classroom, and Yeondu passes out. 
Bo Ra gets her on her back and rushes to get her to the nurse. As they get to the steps, Yeondu tells her to let her down, and Bo Ra gets confused. Yeondu tells her that she is fine. She tells her that she has to go and get Wunho, and that Haiyan Jin will help her, because he's waiting outside for her. Bo Ra thanks her before rushing to Haiyan Jin. She hopes on, and he gets her to the train station fast. She runs quickly to find Wunho, and feels relief once she spots him. She gets to him and apologizes, he asks what for, and she proceeds to name all of the things she's lied about. She admits to not showing up to the cinema on purpose, and pretending not to be sad. When he told her he was leaving, she is sobbing as she's apologizing for lying to him. But he laughs at her. She asks him what's funny, and he says she doesn't have to apologize. She can just say she likes him. Bo Ra says she can't say that in public, so Woon Ho screams it for her. The train arrives, and Bo Ra screams as loud as she can, that she likes Woon Ho. He smiles and hugs her, as he promises he will be back. All she has to do is wait for him a little bit. Woon Ho gets on the train, and breaks down once the doors close. Their sadness doesn't fade, but they can communicate with each other through the mail. Woon Ho jokes about the world ending once the new year 2000 comes, and reassures her that he will write her a letter informing her. Yeondu and Haiyan Jin seem to be getting closer to each other with time, as they realize they are very similar. New Year comes, and Woon Ho writes Bo Ra a mail wishing her a happy new year, and reassuring her that the world didn't end. Bo Ra fills him in on what's happening in the city, and he tells her about his plans. He wants to go to a broadcasting college in Seoul, and hopes that they can go together. Bo Ra ends up being accepted at that college, but she had no trace of Woon Ho. She emails and calls, but no response from him. We can see Bo Ra and Yeondu at college. Bo Ra sees some people doing research with a camera, the same way she and Woon Ho did, and gets sad. She goes on a blind date, later in the evening. The date arrives, and Bo Ra's world stops, when he says that his name is Woon Ho. It reminds her of Woon Ho, because his full name is Poong Woon Ho. She starts crying and screaming, and everyone gets confused. They can't calm her down, so she ends up leaving the restaurant. She goes to the payphone, and calls Woon Ho. She tells him that it's easier for her to think he's dead, as she will not be calling him anymore. She is over him, and he has no more chances with her. We are taken to the present now. An older Bo Ra comes back to the shop, but sees nobody. She checks a mail package, and sees an invitation to a Joseph gallery, as well as the CD. She decides to go, and she sees a lot of sentimental things in front of her. She sees the payphone she used to call her friends, and even their old shop. Beautiful paintings are displayed on the big screen, but the most beautiful is a plum tree blossoming for her. She sees a text in the corner that says in memory of Poong Woon Ho. A man comes to her, and they sit down for a conversation. He reveals that he is his brother, and he had found out about her, through a tape in an old package of Woon Ho's, long after his death. Bo Ra thanks him for the invitation. If she hadn't found out, she might still be angry at him. He says that he has been upset with her, as he thought that his brother might go to Korea for her, but now realizes that she was the one he wanted. He tells her that Woon Ho had spent the happiest days of his life with her, and she had made him very happy. He thanks her for coming and remembering him, but Bo Ra tells him that she could never forget Woon Ho. She drives home with the VCR tape by her side. She goes to the shop to help her dad pack, and when they finish, she asks whether they have a VCR player. She puts on Woon Ho's old tapes, and memories come through. We see Bo Ra, Yeondu, Haiyan Jin, Woon Ho, and many others throughout the school years. Woon Ho has tapes mostly of Bo Ra, and we get to see how she acted around him. She sees herself being asked about what she wants in the 21st century. She wishes health to everyone, but wishes to be more honest in the new century. It cuts to a tape of Woon Ho and his little brother. He is teaching him how to say hello to Bo Ra, and after some struggle, the kid wishes her a happy new year before running off. Woon Ho looks at the sunset, before coming to set the camera better. He wishes her good morning, and says that he has gotten out of bed at 4 in the morning, only to celebrate her getting into the 21st century. He shows her the beautiful sunset behind him, and says that it is late where she is, and she's probably sleeping. He asks her to hold on a little longer, and promises to come to see her soon. He finishes the video by saying that it will be fun, because it's the 21st century. Tears fill Bo Ra's eyes, but she's happy she got the closure she needed. 